With the kids back at school and still a long way to go until the Christmas or even the midterm break, maybe it's time to think about having a wee break for yourself. Getting away for a few days, could be a city break, could be off to the sun. Well, uh, Emma McHugh from Atlantic Travel and Atlantic Travel actually in Erikenny celebrating 30 years in business this year, but uh, more about that later. But uh, Emma is joining us in studio and uh, we're also uh, streaming if you want to join us on Facebook or YouTube. And Emma, uh, thanks for coming in. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you, Dion. So um, where where could we think of now that would be good value? Because it's all about value this season, I'm sure, and it normally is. But where, if we were thinking of, let's say a city break, where, okay. where, where would be good value? I think now more than ever, value has always been important, but I think everybody's feeling the pinch now. So yeah. um, there certainly is great value there um, if you're looking to get away between now and Christmas. So in you some have, places. Well, some places are obviously better than others. Absolutely. Um, I'm thinking about when you get there as much as getting there. Yeah. So if we look at, say, what it costs to eat out or what it costs for a bottle of beer yeah. when you're there. And, you know, when you when you pair, pair that up then with your flights and your accommodation, that's where you're going to get the value is where the cost of living is a little bit lower mm. um, in destination. And sometimes these aren't traditionally in our mind as city destinations. Some of them are. But some of them aren't. So I think sometimes we need to look a little bit outside the box, outside the Rome, outside the Paris, outside the Amsterdam, okay. um, because there's so much choice. Um, so, for example, if we look at, say, Athens, where a meal for two could cost maybe about 35, 40 euro for a couple of courses and your your bottle of wine, locally made wine, 12, 13 euro. Mm-hmm. Um, great destination right up until the middle of November. You're going to get mild weather. Um you're looking at, at, you know, per person, you could look at maybe flights for about 100 euro accommodation, 100 euro per night for a couple. So depending on whether you want three or four nights, um, you can really tailor then the cost of, of your trip. Now, bearing in mind, Athens is a little bit further away than most city destinations. You need to, t- to bear that in mind. So it's about four hours from Dublin. Mm-hmm. Um, it is an absolutely fabulous city. I was there in August myself. And the place we would advise everyone to stay is the Placa area. And it lies in the shadow of the Acropolis. It's stunning. It has, even though it's in the city centre, it has a Greek village feel about it. So you have beautiful cobble streets, tree lined avenues, really, really atmospheric. And you get a great sense of history in the city itself. Well, it's hard to avoid history in Athens. But I remember when I was there years ago, um, it was in the height of summer, granted, but the, the heat was stifling and the pollution was awful. So have they, uh, have they, well, whatever about the heat, yeah. if you go now at this time <laughs> of the year, it yeah, shouldn't the be heat, as warm. Yeah, I was there in August and the heat was definitely stifling. But if you're looking at shoulder season kind of, you know, from October to the middle of November and again, early spring, you're going to have beautiful weather, not too hot, cooler at night, but perfect for sightseeing. If you're going to be on foot all day, you don't want, you know, mid 30s, high 30s kind of weather. Um, Certain parts of the city are definitely cleaner than others. That's why the Placa area is is where we would tell people that look for accommodation there. And you're then you're everything is quite accessible on foot from that area. So you have Hadrian's Arch, you have, you know, it's home to democracy. That's what they say, Athens. So you have you have philosophers that would have, have, have been there. It's got rich, rich culture and rich, rich history and very good value. OK. All right. That's uh, that's Athens. Where where else? Uh, any, anywhere else springs yeah, to mind? Well, if you don't really want to spend four hours on a flight, um, Lisbon is also another very, very popular destination. Mm. And again, you're looking at similar cost of, of living. So a meal for two, um, under 40 euro for a meal for two. Um, there's a huge food culture in, in Lisbon there as is. well. I was watching uh, Devin McGuire's programme during the week and uh, he's doing a tour of Portugal and he was mm-hmm. in Lisbon and uh, the food looked great and the value was good. But in, in general, Portugal's, you know, it's pretty good value. It, n- it nor- normally is, even down the Algarve. Yes, yeah. I find I, I do think, though, you get better value up up north um, and, and uh, like, it, it definitely is a foodie destination at the moment. Yeah. Um, and there's some fabulous places in Lisbon. There's a place called the Time Out Market and it's like a warehouse venue and there's 40 over 40 restaurants on it and they they have to keep up a certain standard so they drop they're out fantastic sushi to steak it suits everybody um if there's a group of you traveling and you're walking down streets nobody can decide where to go 
this is the place to go because right. there's something for everybody. And again, extremely good value. Um, and the variety is fantastic. Uh, funny you should say uh, something for everyone because on, on the programme, he, he, he had a, a sort of a cross range of food. There was street food and there was a pastry shop and then there was a high end restaurant. So, you know, Lisbon ticks a lot of boxes. It does. And it, it is, it's famous for its pastries as well. Yeah. yeah. yeah so hard, hard to resist. Yes, they are super. And uh, maybe one more idea for a city break? Yeah, so we, we have then Krakow, which is brilliant any time of the year. So we have... Eastern Europe in general offers good value. It so does. Now, this is the first time that some Western European countries, this first year that Western European countries will have same similar price point for as Eastern European. All right. It has always traditionally been Eastern European. Yes. So that sh- has slightly shifted. Well, it's showing really that Eastern Europe is catching up yes. rather than the other way around. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Krakow, again, I would avoid July, August, very hot, but um, great value, shoulder season, any time from, from, say, March up until late May, and again, this time of year. And then it switches completely when we get to the end of November and you have Christmas markets. Yes. So again, the prices don't go up. It's the same price point for flights and accommodation, even though it's it's probably a much busier time of the year for them. And when it comes to Christmas markets, Krakow does it as 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 good as anywhere else. Okay. Yeah. So perfectly acceptable weather. And then obviously the closer you get to Christmas, the colder it's going to be. But there's somebody uh, asking, are there any good spots in October that are still warm? Well, uh, Lisbon will still be nice in October. Athens will still be nice in October. Absolutely, but yes. But if um, I mean, maybe this is somebody who's you know thinking about combining it with a bit of lying by the pool. Yeah. Well, for example, um, I'm actually just back from Palma myself, and people would associate Palma as the capital of Majorca, and people would associate Majorca with summer sun um, and package holidays. But Palma itself is the most amazing city. Um, you can stay in the city, or there, there's plenty of options. Maybe ten kilometers out, where you have a holiday feel, you have beach, you have a proper pool, nice hotel. You just hop in a taxi then in the evening time to avail of, of the city in, sites. In the city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, someone's looking for an active holiday, something related to hiking. Any recommendations? Mm. What would be good for hiking? Austria, <sighs> Austria, Germany, Slovenia, Montenegro. Um, yeah. Camino's still extremely popular. Um, extremely popular. And it's, it's getting more popular with bigger groups now. So... Um, you might have multi-generational um, groups going or you could have clubs going but uh, Camino is still very popular But and yeah. it would be good at this time of the year because the oh, temperatures would be nice yes especially if you're, if you're planning on being active during the day you want to avoid anything that's too hot yeah. is midweek better to book? normally mm. is it absolutely is yeah that would be definitely a top tip um, you can save you could save over 100 150 per person by going on a Tuesday coming back on a Friday as opposed to over a weekend doesn't always suit everybody, but no. yes, if, if if money is something that you want to save, then if you can be flexible with your dates of travel, you'll save money on that. The destinations that we were chatting about, I mean, this is overall good value. Not too expensive to get there because they're not too far away. I know you mentioned Athens is that little bit further, but in general, not too far away. But it's also the cost of, you know, public travel when you get there, eating out, the cost of drink, accommodation, mm-hmm. uh, overall decent value absolutely yes all right so um uh you mentioned christmas markets um uh, uh krakow uh, where else is popular for christmas markets because some people will be thinking around about now yeah, maybe yeah. Be a nice yes there, there certainly are one that maybe might not be as obvious to everybody it's berlin um you know that you have the vienna's munich's but mm-hmm. berlin um has a staggering 50 Christmas markets in the city itself. So you think Christmas markets? I don't know. It's sort of we have this uh, notion, and it's a romantic notion of, uh, uh, I don't know, you know, somewhere nice like uh, uh, as you say, uh, Vienna or uh, Salzburg or something. But Berlin. Berlin, yes, believe it or not, and it is a super destination for both families and couples. You have a mix of markets, so you have a winter world which has tobogganing and ice skating. Mm. Or you have then um, Alexanderplatz, which is a much more traditional wooden huts, beer houses. But they're all lit up the same at night. You have that atmosphere, um, your hot mulled wine, just walking through the stalls. So it can be as romantic as you want it to be. be. (laughs) They they just do it and do it well. Yes, absolutely. 
30 years in business, uh, Atlantic Travel, uh, first opened in 92 and now an award-winning travel agency. So uh, a lot has changed since 92. Mm. Booking it, booking now. And, and I, I see as well that uh, some of the team that started with, with Atlantic back in 92 is still there. They are. Three. Three, three from day one. Moy McCrossan was there the first day it opened. And Mary T. Toy shortly after, and then Caroline Kerr. So they have been in it for the long haul. So they have seen changes wow. from everything was calculated manually with mileage for airline tickets, and now it's a click of a button. So it's it's a world away from what it was. We do. It's, it's all too easy to forget, and we do you know take it for granted. It's all a click of a button. And it's so easy now on, online. But back then, it was all done on the phone. Everything was on the phone. Yeah, yeah, and you could hold. You could you could come in and you could say hold me that holiday option, and we could hold her for forty eight hours, and we just ring our supplier because it it's a it was a very small world in travel, so mm. you knew the person personally at the other end of the phone, and they'd hold the 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 holiday for you, and if you got on particularly well, they may hold it a couple of more days, um. So you know it, it, there was it, a lot of it was about relationships as yeah. well, which was hugely important. You knew your travel agent, yes, and you had a you had a relationship with them. Uh, but that, that's not to say that uh, you know that that's changed. Uh, things might be also handier and and different. But the, you know, there's still a lot of trust involved, and you just know that when you're going to a travel agent, that they're going to recommend places that they're well familiar with, that they've you know had groups out there or they've been to themselves and stuff. So yes, the and in the in the same uh, same way. They may have been somewhere that they wouldn't recommend. <laughs> yeah. So it's not That's always uh, places that they've been. The, the experience has been good. They know. Okay. This is they know to avoid. May read well, but in reality, it's it not necessarily like that. So, yeah, it's it's about. Um, I suppose we know our clients, and uh, as we book more for them, we get to know what they like and and you know what suits them. So it is still an awful lot about trust and relationship. And between there's nine of us there on the team, and between us all, we have. We visited an awful lot of places, yeah. so there's so a lot there's, of experience. There's a lot of knowledge the there behind place. that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, back then you had to uh, calculate the price of flights. It wasn't just a book price. Well, it was a book price, but it, it had to was. be. It was. It was different. Like factors. an encyclopedia. So, uh, and if it was a round the world ticket, it was multiple stops, and then you had to calculate. Um, like the book listed every flight that was operating at the time. So you might have to do a Dublin London. Uh, a London, Singapore, Singapore, depending on where the person wants to be. And you had to calculate so those you miles. you go through the book, get those flights, yes. add them all up and tell them what yes. the total And at be. the time, um, visas and inoculations and all of that kind of stuff was not ready available on the internet like it is now. So, you know, that knowledge had to be there if you were stopping off somewhere, what visa was required and what duration of, of layover was needed. It was a laborious... <laughs> task. <laughs> a laborious task, but... Um, at the same time, it was it was just the start of, of of travel and leisure travel, and you know, thankfully, it's grown mm. into a much easier sometimes, process. Sometimes, sometimes people got a got a bit of information on Airtel or CFAX, and then then went in and asked more questions of the travel agents, and uh, kind of uh, delved into it a wee bit uh, to see what was really available. Yeah. You know, what was behind the page? A uh, uh, cruise uh, cruises. It, it seems to me that everybody I chat to this year, they've been on a cruise or they're planning a cruise. It's It's been big business it's again this year. It's hugely popular, yeah. Um, and it still is. And I think some people, including ourselves, didn't expect it to bounce back so so quickly after mm. COVID. Um, but the projected growth for the companies that are operating cruise ships is phenomenal. And it is not, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Mm. Um, and for some people, it just offers a really, really good value point where you might want to see four cities in one trip and not pack and unpack. Um, so uh, there's it caters for everybody from small luxury ships that hold 600 to um, the megalith ships that hold yeah. 6,000. So it's there's so many different companies and types of ships that really, if you haven't cruised before, you really do need a little bit of guidance on it. Everybody seems to come back with good stories from their cruise holiday, so that's uh, you know that's yes. that's the sort of uh, endorsement that makes a difference. Uh, and um, 
Uh, obviously, I've you know uh, been having access to, to online makes uh, makes life a, a lot handier for uh, travel agents like yourself. But you know, as you've mentioned earlier, you just can't beat the knowledge the knowledge that's in the room and the recommendations that you might make or places that you might uh, suggest that you would be best avoided. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what else is? I mean, we're only twelve months on from uh, restrictions and you know needing vaccination certs and so mm-hmm. on so I, I, we've just there's a real appetite sort it of just feels, to get it yeah it feels it's, like it's a much longer like does, to it? think that it was illegal 16 months ago to travel just seems like an early a lifetime ago it it picked up pace once we could and now this year the ac- acceleration has just it's just gone Even beyond today, what we the world expected. health organization are are chatting about mm-hmm. the end of the pandemic that it is in sight so I mean, it's great for your industry and how and you are surprised how quickly it's yeah. bounced back, not just cruise holidays, but just travel in travel general. Travel in general and inbound travel as well, like tourism into Ireland is hugely important. And, you know, they're both congruent with each other, like the flights that bring passengers in are the flights that bring us out as well. So, yeah. you know, one feeds off the other. And and for we're, we're permitted now to travel and, and to go back out and explore, that allows the doors open for for people to come here as well so you know it's a positive thing all around uh someone's asking to, just on on that do you need to be vaccinated to fly from belfast to spain if you okay. are over 12 yes there's different rules for dublin and for belfast do they still check so for vaccine certs they do yes as recently yeah. as last last saturday when i was going through but yeah anyone over 12 um if they are well excuse me if they're not vaccinated they need to produce a negative test so you can still travel, but you still have a certain form of restriction that you have to show a test. Okay. Under 12s, nothing. And then out of Dublin, nothing. Or knock. Okay, so. okay, for you. Uh, finally, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Any good Halloween destinations for young adults, no kids? What oh. would you suggest? Oh, Come well, Halloween. if there's no kids, what mm-hmm. I would suggest is avoiding the midterm. Because all you'll see is kids. <laughs> Fam- families don't go everywhere. There's, there must be certain yeah. locations. I'm thinking Ibiza. Uh, yeah, the season a... for Ibiza, no, would would be finished. No. Yeah, right. yeah. So you're looking the last. Uh, I think it's the first week in October. Ibiza, everything, um, like wind all the down. nightclubs, wind down. Yeah. Um. If if, th- in terms of value, if you say for the for example, the the midterm goes from say the Saturday to Saturday. If you go out on a Thursday, you can get your holiday for half of what you would right. Saturday to Saturday. So, so I would advise looking where, outside of that little period. Wherever they go, try to avoid the midterm. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Emma. Appreciate it. Thank you. On this week's Business Matters, I'll be joined by Joe.